Good morning. Welcome to the B.F. Anderson Technical Report for April the 13th. Realize technical analysis is nothing more than us trying to use everything within our powers to evaluate the markets. Now, every market, I don't care what market it is, has corrections and pullbacks. Now, what I wanted to do here with this graph was to refresh everyone's memory of the 7.5% rule. Now, there's another name for the 7.5% rule. It falls into a category of technical indicators called blast-off indicators. So what the rule is, is that simply you take a 35-week moving average on the S&P 500, and if the spread between the S&P 500 and the index itself reaches 7.5% or more, that is somewhat of a blast-off. In other words, it's rare. We've only seen this 10 times since 1980, so it's a rare occurrence. Now, the last time it happened was back in March 8th of 2013, and you can see what happened. Now, the idea here is, is that why is all of a sudden, you know, it's since the beginning of the year, the market blasting off like this. Well, it's blasting off because the economic business cycle is improving. We're seeing uh, first quarter earnings reports were good. So as earnings improve, the market improves. So the other interesting facet here is, is that of the 10 times that we've seen the blast off indicator, the 7.5% rule, of the 10 times, most of the time, going back and looking at every incident, most of the time, the market really doesn't pull back at all. So that was kind of what happened back here in 13. There wasn't much of a pullback at all. Now, the average gain of the year that you get the blast off indicator is 15.4%. So, I mean, it's an above average year because the average year for the stock market over the last 80 years is 8 to 10%. So the blast off indicator indicates that there's something changing here. We're getting a, an upsurge due, and I believe it's to do with improving corporate earnings. Now, the pullbacks most of them, there really isn't much of a pullback, but the average pullback since 1980 has been two and a half percent. So if we look at where we are now, we are in the market is in a correction right now. So we hit a high on, um, let's see here, on the uh, 21st, we hit a high of 2,365.38 was the high. We're currently uh, at the low yesterday. We hit 2,337.25, which really works out to be around 1%. So we've had a 1% pullback since the 7.5% uh, signal hit, which really looks pretty normal. Now, if we start getting to be more than 2.5%, then we'll have to reevaluate. But so far, so good. This does look like a bull market, and the S&P 500 7.5% uh, rule is somewhat confirming that. Now, what I've done here is I wanted to kind of uh, deal with a, uh, another moving average. This is the 200-day moving average. We're looking at mid-cap stocks. These are the middle-sized companies. Now, I want to point out the founder of Fidelity was a gentleman by the name of Ned Johnson. And he was once asked if on a desert island, what indicator would he use to determine market trend? And he basically said the 200-day moving average. So, you know, there's... Uh, all kinds of moving averages out there. And I do want to mention uh, Ned Johnson hired Peter Lynch back in 1966, who was the manager of the infamous Fidelity Magellan Fund. So what I want to do here is look at the 200-day moving average relative to economically sensitive areas, just to see what the market is telling us here. So the general rule is, is that if the index itself is above the 200-day, and if the 200-day is in an uptrend, that's positive. That's a bullish situation. Now, you got like, like you can see here, it too has pulled back, but it's still well above the 200-day, and the 200-day is still in an uptrend. Now, here, let's take the small caps. So look at the small cap stocks. Um, the trend is up. The price is above. Now, we're moving sideways here, but the, the trend is still up. We're not 
cracking the 200 day and moving below it. This is the Russell 2000, which is the small cap stocks. Now let's look at transports. Again, very economically sensitive. Stay with the trend. The trend is your friend. Okay, we've got an uptrend here. We've got a pullback, but nothing that really looks devastating. So that's a very economically sensitive area. Here I just went ahead and went into banking. Here's regional banking. Same concept. Trend is up. Getting the pullback. I think everything looks fine. Now here's another very sensitive economic area. This is metals and mining. And, uh, you know, I, I do want to point out, you know, corrections in, in markets, whether stock market, oil market, housing market, whatever market you want to look at, every market has a correction. It is as, it's as if the sun will rise and fall. It's going to happen. So, again, metals and mining, we're still above the 200-day in an uptrend. Now, what I did here was something kind of unique and different. I'm, I'm showing you all a new concept. I'm comparing the Standard & Poor's 500 which is stocks, and this is the TLT, which is 20-year plus bonds. So that I'm comparing stocks to long-term bonds. Now, what I've done here is I've gone back to the 2008 bear market, and you can see here what's happening. When the, when the lines are going down, now this is just the moving averages, and I've got the 100-day, the 200-day, and the 300-day moving average here. Now, when bonds start outperforming stocks, the line goes down. So you can see here that back in you know 07 we started to see deterioration in the moving averages uh, where the fastest moving average crosses below you know the 100 day crosses below the 200 day and the 300 day and you're starting to see serious deterioration and then bad things happened you know we got the bear market now I then took the same concept and brought it up to date to where we are today. So I'm comparing the S&P 500 to bonds you can see that back around December of, um, of last year, we started to see where the fastest moving average broke out. So in other words, when the line is going up, it's telling you that stocks are doing better than bonds. In other words, risk on, risk off, bonds are defensive, stocks are not defensive, therefore stocks are doing better, which tells us, the market's telling us that maybe the business cycle is turning and the economy is getting better. Now what I did here was basically the same thing but I compared the Russell 2000, which is small caps to bonds. Again, same story. We're getting a very robust move here in small caps relative to bonds. Then I did the same thing again with the financial stocks. So you can see that uh, uh, the trend is up, that the, the financial stocks are doing better than bonds. Now, I, I do want to mention here, we do not get into forecasting here. We do not get into projections. It's a waste of time. Uh, you know, I can't think of an economist that tends to get things right. So the best thing to do, I believe, is to listen to the market. The market is efficient. The market absorbs all the news that's out there, and then you see it in the price. So right now, the market is telling us that stocks are outperforming bonds, and that's good. Now, as we move to some individual stock ideas, I wanted to share this with you. Back to the 200-day. This is the 200-day moving average. Uh, what the what you want to avoid are stocks where the price is below the 200 day and the 200 day is in a downtrend. The theory is that if the 200 day is in a downtrend that any rallies in the stock such as here will be met by a new low which is here. So this needs to turn up. This is Macy's. This is a department store. We all know about what's going on with the department stores. Now let's compare that to Amazon, which is killing, you know, brick and mortar uh, retail. So you can see here the trend is up. I mean, the 200-day is moving up. The theory here would be any pullbacks in the price of the stock, as long as the 200-day is in an uptrend, any pullback in the price of stock will be met by a new high, which is exactly what happened here. So Amazon's had a little bit of a pullback. Uh, odds are it'll stabilize and make a new high. Okay, let's take another look at another disruptive thing going on in the economy. This is Ford Motor Car Company. Again, moving average turning down, price looks bad, you know, any rally in the stock mets is met by a new low. I don't know, Ford doesn't look too good to me. Now let's look at Tesla, which is electric cars. Now, is the market telling us something here? Now, one thing I'll note about Tesla is the stock really has gone nowhere um, 
for about two years. I mean, it's just gone nowhere. But then all of a sudden, it breaks out. Now, you see also that the line, the 200-day moving average is starting to turn up. It's not, it's coming off of a very flat period, but starting to turn up. Now, that would mean that any pullbacks, which we've got here, could be met by higher highs. But who knows? We may turn over and roll over here and pull back like so forth. But the, the main message I'm trying to get across today is, is that we are in a bull market. All my indicators that I'm looking at says this is a bull market. So, you know, any pullbacks in the market should be minimal and, and really used as a buying opportunity. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.